The Democratic Party created space for someone like me to even be possible. My district had faith in the possibility of someone like me serving the United States Congress. Uh, the, the anxiety and stress even among our children, among those that are already hurting, I gotta tell you, it's too much. It's, it's overwhelming sometimes to hear uh, the pain in people's voices that say, I'm being forgotten, I'm not seen, I'm not heard. You know, I have two Muslim boys that I'm raising in this country, and I desperately do not want them to have another four years of Donald Trump in the Oval Office. Don't underestimate the power of the human contact during this movement work that that is going to be able to drive out the Trump administration out of the White House and be able to turn out people like we've never have. Donald Trump fans the ugliness of xenophobia and racism, homophobia and misogyny, all for his own personal benefit, regardless of the people he hurts along the way. He's looked out for himself and the wealthy and the well-connected and the powerful, and he's ignored the middle class and those aspiring to be in the middle class. He's more about Wall Street than Wisconsin. He's passed the largest transfer of wealth from the middle class to the uber wealthy via the most lopsided tax cut in our history with 83% of the benefits going to the top 1%. On November 3rd, we have the opportunity to put competence back in our nation's leadership and confidence in our system of government by electing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We can truly address climate change before it's too late. We can give workers their voices through better labor laws and the right to organize. We will have to make sure we get the vote out in 2020 like there is no tomorrow, because in many ways, there may not be if we don't. There is a truth about us that's really powerful that Martin Luther King said so eloquently in his letter from the Birmingham jail when he said that we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. And I want to let everybody know how powerful we are. Beautiful thing about this nation conceived in virtue. We still are a nation where the power of the people is greater than the people in power. And so my dad was this po' boy from North Carolina, grew up in the mountains. And his story is the story of human grace, human kindness. In the house that I grew up in, my, my, my father was told that it was sold. The white couple came and found out it was still for sale. The white couple didn't show up. My dad did, and a volunteer lawyer, this mighty white man named Marty, who when his country was in a moral moment, he didn't allow his inability to do everything to undermine his determination to do something. He set in motion a set of dominoes that are the reason why I'm speaking to you today. We now have to ignite the urgency in others who are sitting on the sidelines. Use your power. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The squad is big, y'all. It's not just four members of Congress. It is anyone doing the work of building a more equitable and just society. So that certainly includes all of you. That as beautiful as it is to be Black and as proud as I should be to be Black, that I was being born into a struggle. My mother was an activist, a tenants' rights organizer, an advocate, and a survivor. And she had an expectation that I would do my part in that struggle. And from a young age, she instilled in me the value and the possibilities of movement building and civic engagement. And on election day, when she would pull that curtain and we would go in to vote, and she would turn to me and say, never forget, that we are powerful. We organize to build community. We organize to build power. We are powerful. We the people are powerful. These crises have been exacerbated by the occupant of the White House and Republicans in Congress who at every opportunity have turned their backs on American people. When it comes to their policies, the cruelty is the point. And when it comes to their culture of corruption and chaos, that is the point. Between now and November, each one of us must do everything we can to engage folks in our community, to expand the electorate. Do not make assumptions up about who desires and deserves a seat at the table of democracy. Talk to everyone. Expand this electorate and make clear the stakes in this election. We are united in going forward uh, to defeat the worst and most dangerous president, uh, perhaps in the history of this country. Uh, he is an authoritarian. He does not believe in our Constitution. 
Uh, every day in one form or another, he is undermining American democracy. And it is an outrage beyond outrage that we have a Republican Senate that it has turned its back on these people. We believe in a government that represents all of the people, not just a handful of wealthy individuals. And what we have to do, and I think Joe Biden understands this, we have to invest in our young people, decent jobs, decent education, not more jails and incarceration. We have got to elect Joe Biden to do everything we can to do that. But number two, the day after the election, we have got to rally the American people to create an agenda that works for all and not just large corporations and the 1%. So it is absolutely imperative that all of us work together, reach out to our friends, our neighbors, co-workers, and defeat Trump.